Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back uh, to more MOR 8v8s. Uh, my name's Toaster, and I'm here casting with my good friend. Saruman of many colors, who is currently sacrificing a very, very delicious turkey sandwich. Roasted turkey sandwich, might I add, with lots of of delicious stuff it's got sun-dried tomatoes it's got crispy non-romaine lettuce because lord knows that i do not want to get salmonella and fresh roasted turkey and i'm doing this for you chat i hope that you guys appreciate the effort all right enough of, enough about your sandwich Sorry, this is a deli this is a delicious sandwich and i want to eat it let's let's talk about the teams tonight on team one tonight we got dropship four uh somewhat Somewhat affiliated with D5, but not really. And on Team 2, we've got Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy. Dropship 4 team. carrying the standard for Dropship 5. The Dropship name never dies, thankfully, because Astinius, part of the old guard of Dropship 5, back when it was just a little baby uh, getting its first legs, taking its first steps into the comp scene, was one of the originators. Him and Silent Monk actually formed a pretty solid light duo together. But uh, apart from Astinius, really no names from the original Dropship 5 team remain. Um, Act 64, Spank King, Soviet Armada, Magnificent Bastard. Oy, oh, good. Name like that. All right. And uh, System Belmont have all spent time playing with Dropship 4, but um, they never actually did. And then Ying Yang Spinny Thing, um, also known as uh, TKO in the past. Sorry, TKO, but I have to out you to put your history in context. Uh -huh. Also played cop with Dropship 5, although he played more of a situational role. He was much more um, into the assault heavy slots. Yeah, I'm so he didn't fine. see as much playtime as others, but uh, you know he was also a uh, he was a staple. And uh, what about Dseg? Uh, Dseg, um, I, I would they don't I don't think they have much of a comp history. I believe they have played uh, some MRBC, but you know they're just kind of a group of friends. It seems that enjoy playing together. They've got some streamers. I know Death's Riddle has streamed in the past, but uh, ostensibly it's Sean Lang's group. I'm not sure how much he actually plays with them. I don't believe he's playing any of uh Marshall Olympiad so but yeah they've got they've got some decent players i know uh, i looked up stats before this and uh nerf and snafu snafu if we see him later they've they've got some pretty good stats so no pushovers uh on their side either but we'll see um this match is pretty important for NA Div C right now i believe on the leader or on the boards Cameron Highlander is officially in the lead but this is a week 3 match that's been delayed so if D4 wins this, that should handily put them at the top of the board there, and they're they look to be the favorites to win this division. And you know what they are because uh, Dropship Four is um, definitely at the top. They're currently the only undefeated team left in D4. But now we are going to the Mech Bay. All right. <laughs> Finally get this done with. Uh, remember, this is uh, week three, so we're going to be starting off with Tourmaline. We are starting off with Tourmaline. All right, so D4 banning River City. A little odd for NAS, but Terra Therma's out too. d Stag sign they don't want to play there. No Alpine, and we're going to Rubalite. What do you know? The match that the map that's a favorite for EU is taken NA by storm. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, crossing over. Everyone wants to play Rubelite now, I guess. Maybe All right, and it looks like learn. the teams are locked. We're going to be moving soon. Sorry, Toast, for talking over you. Oh, but uh, it seems like System System Belmont, our caster, is getting extremely antsy right now. Ants in his pants, and he needs to dance. All right, well, let's get this on. Uh, game on the road. Uh, so Just need to confirm with DSAG real quick. Unfortunately, our burning cl valuable clock here trying to confirm all this. Okay, and now let's go. Took them so long to get in the lobby, and now that they're here, they just want to go, 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 I guess. Yeah, I know. How rude. <laughs> How dare they? They have to be proper in a sit in lobby for half an hour before everybody actually readies up. Amen to that. The D5 special. Sometimes we weren't ready until an hour later. Oh, no. And we enjoyed it. We made teams wait. It Sorry. was a valid tactic. Sorry for anyone who had to play or schedule with us. Hey, you know what? There was a samurai by the name of, um, shoot. 
I can't remember his name now, but there was a samurai that would routinely show up to his duels 30 minutes late as a tactic to infuriate his opponent and undo his confidence. So it's legit. All right. Samurai. were. All right. Speak. All right. So let's see. I wonder what we're going to do. We saw last week, uh, the kiting strat. Who, who was it that I don't even. The kiting strat was done by Phoenix Legion and by a little attempt of Isengrim, and right now it seems like that uh, D4 is bringing the speed, the magnificent B word, bringing ER medium lasers and heavy large lasers and a linebacker going forward. Uh, pilot error bringing medium lasers in the fleet, Act 64, uh, bringing loads of Daka in the blood ass. That map, that map's going to be a big one. They also have a Fafner with uh, ultraviolet with eight LB2s. Fafner also bringing the Daka four ultra fives, and the trades are already going off. It looks like Daka v. Daka right now, uh, with Diamond Shark bringing a combination of Maulers, Warhammers, Black Knights, Annihilators, Annihilators, and War... Annihilators and uh, Maulers being the for source of the dock, and it looks like they're already starting uh, to move in a little bit with the trading phase. It looks like this push from DSAC didn't get scouted right away, when it probably should have, and Spanking... These Annihilators get up to him. Might just be dead already. He won't be able to reposition in that Ultraviolet. And that's a shame, too, since Spank King is definitely a very good shot, but he is way out of position right now. He needs to duck his little dire wolf head back in, wisely using the tourmalines to cover, but the dire wolf is very big. He can't save it. Opie, however, is taking a little bit of damage from Pilot Air. Astinius and Magnificent Bastard are circling back to try and help him, and then we have some large laser cover fire from Ying Yang Spinny Thang all the way back in his trading position, and right now it seems like D-Sag's push has stalled, which is a shame because they definitely had the advantage. That feels like a mistake. Spank Tink King was pretty much dead. They could have gotten a kill and continue to roll in with D-Seg backing yeah. up on stage behind the protection of the Tourmalines. Most of these D4 mechs are still in this low ground. That's not really where you want to be, TKO or Ying Yang, whatever you want to call him. He's he's in the real prime spot to be receiving a push, and he's the only one up there. D4, but. however, is also in trouble because their one cap point is currently being captured by Souls and the Black Knight while the rest of his team is fighting um, the BKL. Oh, no, that's not a Black Knight. What is that mech? Is Black that a Lanner. Blood Asp? A Black Lantern. Black Lantern? Mask. It's a wow, I am medium. not used to seeing that. Oh. Um, fair but enough. Shows what I know. I have D4 not is, seen that mech. D4 is getting pretty aggressive with these linebackers on this corner. True North Strong taking, taking a beating and now Nerf is here to kind of be backing him up. <laughs> Stinius takes Oh, it. Stinius is eating a lot of shots right now down 56%. He needs to back out. I do like this rotation from Dropship 4. It's showing that they do know their stuff. That cop experience is starting to sink in a little bit. Opie, however, is getting some hits on Axe. True North also sinking the shots. Stinius is trying to make a flank. It doesn't look like it's going to really be a wise one. And right now, Stinius is trying to tank Death Rivital, pounding down the damage. Axe returns, however, by killing True North. Spank and True North both down 1 1. But Soviet's soon going to follow in the Magnificent. B word is getting shot up like crazy, but Sister Belmont cleans up Death's Riddle. Brawl is starting to get a little chaotic. Axe sinks Nerf. Stinius self destructs to try and push out the last of his heat. And right now, MK2 is making a blind rush in his Marauder to try and finish Soviet Armada. Look at the tanking by Soviet Armada. He lasted for a long time, and MK2 is going to pay for it. Now, uh, Axe taking a lot of machine gun fire from Souls in here in that Black Lantern, but I don't think it's going to be enough at this point. I don't know. It's it's more even on kills than I, I was thinking, but... Looks System like Belmont is going to take down King down, but Opie takes down Axe, so right now the game is probably going to be even soon. King down's down 27%. He gets sunk by our very own honorary caster, System Belmont. The magnificent B-Ward, however, is running away in his linebacker. He is not able to get much done. He is fleeing the scene of the crime of his battle. Astridry. Pilot Air right now just trying to scat along to Epsilon, but the caps are definitely not favorable to Dropship 4, and the percentages aren't exactly in their favor either. Flea, the Flea and Pilot Air, the Fleet 20 is the only favorable mech. Meanwhile, the Wolfhound 2 with Ferret is the other healthy mech on Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy. I will yeah. take a Wolfhound 10 times out of 10 against a Flea in a light duel, especially in Div C where the light pilots probably don't necessarily play their lights like light pilots, but System Belmont comes in with the kill! OP-74 about to be sunk! By all the DACA! Boom boom! Now it's just Ferret. Ferret and Solzen in the Black Liner. Where is Solzen? Is just bailed. Solzen is capping! Yeah. I don't, I'm not. Maybe that's the right right move? It's gonna be hard to kill uh, Ying Yang and uh, Battlemaster, but Ferret, maybe he'll try and like kill Belmont, pick the flea, and then get out of there? I don't He just needs to get out of the shots from this Battlemaster, though, I think. 
on that the indecisiveness of anything. the lower divs is definitely sinking in. Solzen basically just traveled all the way to Cap Kappa and really didn't try to fortify the cap advantage. He basically came to the fight late, took himself out. I'm not even sure why he ran. Did he not have guns? I mean, he has his machine guns and his SRM6s. He probably didn't feel that he'd be able to take that fight, but now he's running to try and support Ferrot. If Ferrot and Solzen can take out Pilot Arrow, this will be a huge blow to Dropship 4. Solzen finishes out System Belmont, though. The fight could come down to this. Pilot Arrow making a huge Huge mistake! He overheats, right and it's gonna legs. die. Oh my oh, goodness! No. The throw is real right now. He is dead. That's terrible news. Without pilot error to cap, this is not this... looking good. The magnificent B word is probably gonna get sunk. And right now, TKO's got to come in for the finish. But his battle master is not equipped to take down these mechs. Ferrot gets oh, leg and kill. Good effort, but now it comes down to Solzen and TKO. TKO has to kill this Black Lander. The speed of the Black Lander will allow them to cap out, and D4 did a poor oh, job facilitating the cap game. Yeah, I was wondering why the that uh, linebacker was never shooting, but he was like completely out of weapons. He was just capping there, trying to uh, bring back, the, back this point advantage, but now it's like Battlemaster uh, <laughs> trying to not only like keep these caps from getting too far out of hand which they kind of already are got to try and maybe leg his opponent and and once again, indecisiveness sinking through. TKO needed to finish the Theta Cap before he tried to run all over the place to run and chase Solzen. Solzen's going to take advantage of this. I don't like the odds of, Delta, of Dropship 4 right now. I would honestly say that the game is in the hands of DSAG. They are in the driver's yeah. seat. The only way Dropship 4 could win this is if Solzen makes a terrible misplay and gets within range of those large lasers of TKO slash Yin Yang Spinny Thang. And even then, um, I I mean, the Black Lantern, his only his shoulders are open, his center torso is kind of weak, but even still, there's a lot of damage to be sprung. I've never actually experienced a Black Lantern. I was always told that it was not a good mech. What's your experience with it, I, I hate the mech, personally. I don't think it's a very good mech. But in this situation, I guess it's working. Uh, he goes 120 without mask and 150 with it, so it's basically a light mech. Um, and I don't think, yeah, I just don't think Ying Yang will ever be able to catch him. Unless, no, there's a terrible misplay. <laughs> Even then, you know, he could lose a side torso and probably still be okay. His legs are so fresh, it's not like you're ever gonna leg him, I don't think. And you just make it into cover. He does manage, uh, so Solzen manages to flip uh, Gamma. And now it looks like he's gonna head over towards Epsi. Um, one of the only two cap points that D4 has. TKO is still kind of just hovering out around Theta. I think maybe his only chance here is to predict where this lander is going and, you know, maybe you get lucky, get a good burn on a leg or manage And I'm isolate. not in liking what Solzen's doing. When you're in this situation, you have to go where you don't think your enemy is going to be, and he is going exactly where TKO is going to expect that Black Lantern to go. Solzen scouts TKO's position, I think. Uh, TKO's popping his head a little bit aggressively there. Solzen sees TKO as, as eyes on Epsilon and is bailing the F out, GTFO, or at least I think he is. Right now he's dancing around, and while they're dancing around would probably not be the best move. I mean, right now, um, currently uh, DSAG has a commanding cat lead, and there's really no way for um, TKO to really grab it back um, yeah. once, uh, yeah, once some souls and sees that yin yang spinny thing aka tko has abandoned theta um he's basically going to move to potentially cap it setting this game back even more um right now tko just seems to be patrolling theta and epsilon banking on the kill to happen but the kill doesn't necessarily need to happen souls and can just run around the map for a minute and game over yeah i mean souls and can just honestly power down like or maybe not power down but hide behind some corner of map and then wait until he sees a cap start to flip for d4 and then go grab a cap that's furthest away from whatever is whatever tko decides to cap exactly and this is just not good positioning either on tko's part he's just shoveling around back and forth not even trying to aggress it feels like he's yeah. afraid to just overcommit on souls and and really that's kind of the disadvantage of pilot air shutdown like i don't mean to you know throw pilot air under the bus he's a that decent pilot but that is air. why in these yeah, huge pilot error. You oh. cannot sacrifice your mech in the late game, especially when you're the flea. That's the cat mech. Yeah, yeah. TKO has spotted Souls and he knows where he is, but I mean, obviously, TKO just.
can't afford to run up there on Souls, and he has to basically just hope Souls and makes a mistake and kind of walks out in front of him. TKO looks like he's just committed to going to grab Kappa, but at this point, he's going to have to decap both Kappa and Gamma on opposite sides of them. So, thanks. A snooze fest ensues with both mechs running around to cap one after the other. Solson, however, definitely has the advantage. TKO is playing the very game Solson wants him to play. And once again, this was forced because the light mechs on Dropship 4 all unfortunately went down. That was not good. That did not that should not have happened. And I have a feeling the dropship four is definitely gonna be sitting on this match for a bit, being like, gosh darn it, if only those light mechs didn't die. Uh, and uh, and the pilot air shutdown being principal mistake among them. Yeah, Solzhen's already over to grab Epsi, and it's gonna be game. Um, I think if I was Solzhen at this point, maybe just start running towards Sigma. It probably doesn't even matter if you die at this point, and maybe if you grab Sigma, it just ends that much faster. Well, it still does matter if he dies, since I think that if TKO manages to kind of... Um... Yeah, maybe if he... Can well, right now, yeah, TK... What TKO could do is if he managed to meet Solzen at Theta and miraculously kills him, then he could get a cap at Epsilon, slow it down to a one cap, and then if he does it before the 700 ticker, he could potentially get to Gamma and cap that down since it's only Sliver. The Battlemaster might be able to this make is, that yeah, walk in 50 seconds, it's a very but it's fast not looking that way. Master. He's got he's going 78 KPH. <laughs> I wonder if that's XL. I mean, it very well could be. I don't yeah. think that in his position, TKO is really expecting to get shot that much. And right now, it looks like oh, that's exactly what yeah. could happen. Yeah. Tolson doesn't yeah. see TKO yet. Yeah. TKO getting a nice burn on him, but it's not going to be much. Tolson gets out without dying. The Battlemaster just doesn't have the burst potential, the kill power, to yeah. bring something like the Black Lantern down, especially in its current condition. You need PPCs. You need front-loaded damage. That mech can easily twist out of those ER large lasers that Ying Yang is rocking. Yeah, and the only thing open on the Black Lantern are the side torsos, which, I mean, yeah, yeah you lose a bit of speed, but you're still going to be outrunning this Battlemaster, especially with the mask. TKO looks like maybe just going to try and chase him down a little bit, but I'm never going to. This match is far gone, and unfortunately, it was already out of D Forbes' hands when they lost the Light Mechs early. And this match is going to be a nice, hard fought win by Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy. GG's being dropped. Good sportsmanship on both sides. Gotta appreciate that. I know System Belmont's probably fuming a little bit in his mech. And now let's take a look at the damages. Dropship 4 dropping very nice damages. Look at Belmont, man, putting on a show over a grand damage wow. in his Dire Wolf B filled with UX. That thing was a monster. Yeah, he did Great get a job by Belmont. He did get a chance. He got, I know he came around, got some good back shots um, onto the assaults of Diamond Shark, but it just, just wasn't quite enough, especially yep, with that flea shutdown. Soviet Armada also doing work in his Fafnir. Ask 64 doing work in the Blood Asp or Bossakur. I keep forgetting which mech that is. Ying Yang Spitty Thing doing almost 1,900 damage. The damage numbers are definitely top heavy. You got people like Spank King only doing 34, Astinius and Pilot Air are pulling decent damages, 386 and 306 respectively, but it's nothing compared to the Titan damage that was brought in by D4's so Heavy Lance. Meanwhile, D Seg, uh, the Maulers and the Annihilators kind of split between five to 600 damage apiece. And then after that, you have the Marauder, the Warhammer that are around 400, a much tighter spread of damage numbers on D Sag side. Um, basically, that culminated into a messy brawl that ended up that ended with the flea shutting down in a very disastrous situation, which is what caused yeah. the win to go to D Sag Diamond at, Shark Alpha Galaxy. At that point, D4 might, might have just needed to give up Theta, try and keep everybody under the kind of umbrella of protection that is the Battlemaster. Maybe you move the Battlemaster to a point where you can control more of the map, like CSJ Hill. And then you kind of send your flea out and around, and if he ever gets starts getting jumped, you kind of run to the protection of the Battlemaster. Cause I don't think Ying Yang was ever going to die. Mm, I don't yeah, know. pretty much. No, I agree with this one. I agree. I think that overall, the thing... The thing that DSAG did well, though, was that they managed to keep the fight away from uh, TKO, i.e. Yin Yang, for a little bit. They were behind the Tourmalines. They managed to mitigate some of his range potential. Yeah. And, you know, they managed to 
they managed to basically win the brawl by forcing it on Theta. And the biggest weakness of all of this for D4 was that they just didn't... They, I mean, this is probably something that people won't agree with, but I'm of the thought process that high damage numbers are not actually something you want in cop. You want to kill things quickly. So sure, it shows the carrying potential of the mechs involved, but at the same time, with high damage comes high survivability from mechs on both sides, essentially meaning that you're not necessarily farming components, but you're shooting parts of the mech that aren't important. So the more damage you're doing, the longer that mech is actually staying alive, potentially with guns to finish off your mech. So it's kind of the tail games we saw that d4 had a very hard time finishing mechs despite the punishment that their assaults were pulling out i believe d sag had like three mechs that were under 40 percent around for like one two minutes which means that dropship four their initial shots were very very good i'd say great their yeah. initial engagements were very good outside of spanking getting caught out but at the end of the day what happened was that they just weren't able to finish and in fact they got finished when pilot air overheated yeah let's uh head over to the map strat Talk about this real quick. Um, it's pretty simple. DSAG put most of their assaults in alpha. They just trudged across to about the D5 corner and eventually kind of cut into the stage area or whatever you want to call it. I think the rest of their mechs, they just kind of rolled over Theta, got up on the stage, and they kind of just clustered there for a little while. Um, D4 had TKO and his Battlemaster over here, but then most of their mechs are actually sitting in this low ground, which is, in my opinion, not where you want to have them sitting. The direwolf had kind of pushed out here in D5 a little early, and he used this tourmaline to his advantage as best he could, but he was never really able to get out of there. You need to scout this push before you move and assault the stats slow up to that position. And the Fafnir as well kind of got a little bit caught out up here and died eventually. Just a Belmont coming all the way back around through this position with what his dire with his direwolf is, I think, what kind of turned it. He, he timed it pretty well, and D4 with their linebackers and System Belmont in the back managed to kill like almost all the tonnage on D Sag's side. But even then, uh, most of the linebackers for D4 did go down. There was a little bit of a skirmish where, unfortunately, pilot error made a pilot error and shut down in front of a lantern and died for it. And that was kind of the game. You're never going to catch Solzen in that battle master unless Solzen makes a huge mistake. Which is something, and that mistake would have to be huge, yeah, like, was... you know, like, ridiculously huge. Like, I just started playing the game, and I don't know what I'm doing huge. The advantage completely shifted all the way from Dropship 4 to DSAG the moment the fleet. Yeah, Solzen, you know, eventually just started sitting up here. He realized, you know, I didn't even need to get caps. We're so far ahead. I can just wait here. If he moves off to get another cap other than Theta, I can you know, go to the opposite one. That's kind of what we saw. PKO went to Kappa, Solzen went to Epsi, and they met back in the middle, but even then it didn't matter. Solzen was able to get out of there with his life. Yep, and it's once again needs to be said that the damage on those mechs were not like really focused at all. It was spread all over the place, and it's just, you know, it was just... It wasn't... Uh... It wasn't pretty. It wasn't but... ideal. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, that's part of you have some people who are i think newer to comp on d4 um just kind of the nature of the team this is a this is lower div so you know things are going to be a little bit messy you have probably more new players people who don't play a comp as much haven't scrimmed so much uh but learning it's a learning process um but now on to caustic valley uh no lock-ons and domination so what do you expect? It seems like a brawl, especially like medium pulse brawl with uh, linebackers or Novas is really strong at this moment, especially the Vulcan and the Vulcan with jump jets on this map is, I think, a good choice. Also seen some pretty good standoff positions, standoff play, MS almost taking a drop from EMP. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? What I think is that it's going to be bra 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 bra. That's what I think bra, it's going to be right now. Yes, because oh. let me explain. Now there could be some range, but real it's quick, generally what is going take on. Astinius from the lobby. He's apparently had a connector. That is vintage Astinius having connection errors all the way back in the old days, like. <laughs> But even still, uh, props to him. I miss that. Love you, Astinius. Hope you can hear me. But anyway, as I was saying, blah, 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 blah. it's gonna be, it's gonna be. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to. 
So god, I don't like you right now. Um, anyway, uh, as I was saying, it's going to be a lot of brawl because it feels like that a lot of um, lower div teams definitely have some problems coordinating with range. It's a lot easier to just kind of develop the hive mind necessary for a strong brawl push and hit them out of the area of caustic. And it feels like that there's definitely some DPS builds that perhaps that um, these guys feel that they can utilize. Like, we may see more of that, um, the Black Lantern. We may see some yeah. mechs like that, especially pulled from DSAG, that they feel can kind of advantage to kind of gimmick the system a little bit. Um, not necessarily uh, take... Not necessarily not necessarily take things that people expect kind of go up against the grain because in their testings, they see that it worked in their division and it very well could work. Like what might not work against a Div A team will work perfectly well against a Div C team. Sometimes what might not work against a Div A team will work against a Div C team and it kind of works different ways. So it's like when you go through divisions, different metas kind of form themselves up based on what the pilots are used to and what the pilots ground themselves in gameplay wise. So I think that just because of that, it's going to, be very brawl focused yeah no i think that's that's a good point you know lower divisions maybe you don't have people with the experience to know all the trading positions how to slow and adjust their trading rates for their teammates and you know if you want to just build kind of team cohesion and basic fundamentals brawling is a good way to do it um you still have you know you got to focus the right components you got to focus the right mechs uh tar learning how to select targets properly and even just position for the beginning of the brawl is is all very important and i think maybe a little bit easier cuz you know if you have a drop commander who's solid um you know you can kind of rally on them and kind of follow their movements learn how they do so i'd say yeah it's definitely probably better suited for either of these teams but we'll see you know um you got to learn it how to trade and play mid to long range at some point right so no time even like the still present. Even still, they're probably not going to bring range unless they feel it absolutely demands it. Although it is necessary to be said that Four definitely has some high-level range traders. Some um, Ying Yang Spinny Thang uh, traded with uh, some of the best D5 had to offer and would normally do okay. He was a very solid trader, I would definitely say. Spank King as well would always pull in high damage numbers. Kind of more of a pub star hero rather than a comp hero, but even still, very good trader. Uh, Cyclone Jet X also is a very good trader along with a Soviet Armada, although interestingly enough, Soviet Armada is not in his drop and cyclone jack is definitely more of a brawler i would say i would say that maybe him and astinius are going to play some lighter mechs maybe um try and uh, yeah. use maneuverability on their side since uh, they will seem to be the skills that those two prefer but i could be wrong you know i haven't really played with them for in a while um they could have evolved in ways that i would never have expected yeah yeah i wouldn't expect i would, I would expect maybe you know you stick yang or astinius like one or two people in kind of the range mechs to just get trades in early and maybe kind of bait the brawl from the other team and have the rest of your guys kind of sitting in between like what we saw ms do um i don't think you can really go full range on this map very easily anymore not not on domination at least there's no real capping capping strategy they just stick one mech in there and you can't like ever pull a cap advantage just by controlling the map Mm, that is correct i would 110 percent agree with that and it's like it's caustic you know it's not necessarily a large map it definitely opts itself more to speed brawl and we've seen brawl, speed brawl be effective we've seen range trades be more effective especially higher divisions but speed brawl still has its place yep yep it's like teams teams and we're ready. launching yes uh we're launching Knows. let's let's see them prove us wrong um someone will bring lock-ons even though they're not allowed now that we've stopped predicting lock-on weapons <laughs> it's my goal is to see how many predictions i can get this season at least you're predicting <laughs> i guess i guess i'll just throw a third uh, make a dartboard and just throw for darts at it and see what it comes up with probably be about as accurate as All right. They're flying in, looking at scoreboards. I'd say we're pretty much on the money. One mech I didn't really expect to see, I'm not sure. 
Currently rolling out the Bushwhackers, MK2, bringing SRM2s and one AC-10, okay. Um, OP-74 bringing LB-10s, medium lasers, and a rocket launcher 10 on his Bushwhacker. That's going to be interesting. Cake Town, SRM-2s, LB-10s, once again, interesting. Trebuchet 7M being rocked by Ferrot with MRM-60. Uh, Solzen bringing a 7 small pulse laser flea. Hopefully he does... Hopefully he's able to use it to his fullest potential. True North Strong, four SRM-4s on the Assassins. Uh, Huntsmans are also bringing SRM-6s. So we basically have an SRM hit squad on one side, and Astinius is rocking the Commando 2D with Stealth Armor. Interesting. Cyclone Jack bringing in SRM-2s and SRM-4s on his Arctic Wolf. Ying Yang Spinny Thang, IE TKO, bringing MRM-30s on his Quick Drive E4. Marauder 2CA being brought by Spanking. ER Medium Lasers in... Uh, Basically, a lot of DACA with that. And Giga doing the same thing. Broader 2C with uh, medium pulse lasers and Ultra AC-10s. So we got more range on Dropship 4 side, but they're not necessarily using it like range. They're kind of getting very close and aggressive on the uh, side of the Caldera right now. And meanwhile, uh, DSAG just seems to be waiting for a time for their SRM hit squad to go in and get a kill. Yeah, now's, I think now's their moment. Uh, they got to pick a side and go. MK2 taking a little bit of scratch damage, but they're... Punish is spread out more, and I'd say they have better brawlers. Those Marauder 2Cs, I'm not sure, are the best. They seem a little far forward for what they're rocking. Um, right now, just a little <laughs> Stinius harassing in his commando souls and kind of mirroring him, and looks like DSAG's going. Uh, DSAG is taking a little bit of a wide flank. I do not like this. This is playing to the strength of the Mad Cat Mark IIs, but it looks like they're keeping Spanking's head ducked in, and that's exactly what they need. Spanking down 87%. Uh oh, but Gick is the one that's isolated. He's out of cover right now. If, um, if DSAG sees this, Gick is going to die, and it looks like they do right now. 54%. Oh, they just jump on him like a shark to prey. Beautiful push right now. D Gick down. Cake down kills him. And right now, it looks like that DSAC's push is splintered. Spanking finishes Mark II. Violet Blue trying to fight off True North Strong. The SRM hit squad's trying to bring down another mech on D4, but this is terrible. Right now, DSAC's entire lines got spread. Their focus immediately dropped after Gitka did. Yeah, after that, it's just all a bunch of little fights now. Spanking needs to go down in that Marauder. And he, it looks like he still even has his ballistics, and you just take out that ballistic side torso and then probably ignore him, but... OP Definitely takes down Spank down. King, X64 takes down Nerf, so the trade of kills are coming in, but this brawl is definitely as sloppy as they come. The sloppy Joe of caustic brawls is happening right now, is what we're seeing. Cake down the lowest percentage mech at 54%. Oh, wait, I spoke too soon. Violent Blues at 42%. She goes down from Souls, and so the advantage now switches back to Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy. Farrak nukes TKO. That is not looking good, and the tides have turned. Pilot Air manages to take down Death's Riddle, but still, Dropship 4 is down one mech. Looks like Cake Town's the next one to go down for DSAG. Uh, they, they can bring this. D4 might bring this back. Opie's very hurt in his Bushwhacker. True North and Ferret are definitely the biggest threats left on the field. Uh, Astinius brings down Opie, but Pilot Air and Cyclone Jack are trying to chase down the flea. I don't like this. They need to just turn on the Assassin or the Trebuchet and kill him. They have to focus down the heavier stuff first. That's the biggest danger. Finally, Cyclone Jack seems to be getting the message a little bit. They're turning on Ferrot, I believe, and True North Strong. Ferrot brings down Cyclone Jack, though, and that seems to be the biggest weakness. They're, they have tunnel vision. Uh, they had tunnel vision on the flea for way True too North long. True North legs. Strong, though, getting legged. Very problematic. And Astinius trying to get a finish on him through the strike. Strike. Hits true, but doesn't fit true north strong. What a tank. And I just cut out a little bit. Oi, buddy. But anyway, fair right now is lagged. Souls in. Axe kills Axe. Up. Astinius kills true north strong. And it's between Astinius and Pilot Air versus Souls in. And it looks like this drop is going to go to Dropship 4. Does Astinius have weapons left? Let's find out. Oh, I does. believe he does. that he does. He it's not much, SRM. though. He has... He has one SRM that he's going to use to its fullest. It's going to be the hardest working SRM in the Inner Sphere. Oh, oh and Pilot Air finishes, takes the final killing blow on Solzen. That's game. It's a really messy brawl. I, taking Gika off the field that early, it should have been, I think, uh, much more in favor of DSAG, but it seems like just on both sides, the, the focus fire kind of broke down after that first kill. He had fights going on all over the place. Uh, Astinius just impossible to pin down. A lot of work. What else can you tell me?
And what I can also tell you is that to make matters even worse, what happened was that just every kind of devolved into fights that weren't supposed to happen. Cyclone Jack and Astinius were chasing down a flea. That's exactly what teams want in a brawl since the flea can get in and out so quickly. But looking at the damage numbers, D4 comes away with the win. And once again, damage like crazy. Axe 64 doing over 700 damage in the Piranha wow. 2. Clear away the damage leader in this game. TKO and Astinius doing 429 each. That's pretty cool. I don't rarely see that in comp. Uh, Pilot Air and Cyclone Jack falling, over, by, falling next with 294 and 307 respectively. Violent Blue and Gitka uh, are next at 181 and 128. Those two kind of got sank a little early. Meanwhile, DSAG on the other side. Farad with 529 and some other DSAG members around the 500 to 200s. But this is basically the tale of extremely varied damage numbers all over the place in a very, very messy brawl. A hard-fought brawl that was won by Whoa, you got Okay, yeah, it's yeah, it's it a really I nice cut out. Draw, okay, uh, a little good. just at the end. Um, uh -oh. yeah, it's it's pretty good damage spread. I'd kind of I don't know. It's it's a weird damage spread, right? D uh, D four had like a much kind of more split deck, I'd say, as far as tonnage wise. They invested so much tonnage in those two Marauder twos, and they had basically a bunch of lighter mechs in the quick draw to to back them up along with the quick draw is kind of their main tank. Whereas, you know, DSAG had a much better damage spread uh, just based on uh, and they had a much, like, more even tonnage spread across their mechs. They had so many 55 and 50 tonners. Um, I don't It's It's surprising to me that after losing all that tonnage, we managed to kind of bring it back. But it goes on them for managing to do that. And just a quick reminder to everybody in the channel, Just Call Me Ash, our wonderful League Overlord, the Kim Jong-un of Marshall Beyond Reborn, has oh, just no. linked the other Twitch t channels in our uh in our Twitch chat. Please go give them a view. There's some really good matches happening along. MWO Leagues 2 is hosting Potato Killers versus Smoke Adders. Two high-level teams that are capable of a lot of game-changing playability. And meanwhile, we have a pretty solid match going on right now between Aces Wild and Bears Brawlers. It looks like it's uh, evolving pretty well, so just make sure that you give those guys a visit. Check them out because uh, they deserve your love just as much as we do. Yeah, for sure. A lot of good casts going on tonight and even this weekend. There are a bunch more coming. Um, I don't know. You want to head over to the map strat, talk about kind of what happened, what we saw? Um, We can try, but we will fail since it was just pure insanity it's, it's, from the get go. Yep, yep. So, all right. Basically, what happened was that both teams just kind of rushed to. Oh, I'm using the wrong color. Okay, fix that. Yeah, exactly. You drew perfectly. So basically, both teams just kind of went to this location in Delta 5, Echo 5, skirmished around a little bit, and then the brawl evolved. Um, yeah. What happened was that DSAG tried a very wide flank this way and caught Gika out, who was currently in this position right here on the edge of Echo 5. Looked like he was trying to shade away from the brawl, but the rest of his team was kind of in this area, so they really weren't able to back him up. And D Gika dropped like a sack of potatoes very easily, definitely out of position. But um, at the same time, like... DSAG really didn't take advantage of that kill. They didn't focus anything. Yeah, pretty much that green arrow signifies exactly what Potato tornado, happened. man. Uh, potato tornado, definitely. Uh, it was, yeah, I think a D4, you know, they almost lost it there when they started focusing on that flea, but they managed to bring it back together and um, start focusing that trebuchet and that assassin. If that assassin and trebuchet had been allowed to do a little bit more work, um, it could have been disastrous. But and you know what? And you know what? Props to uh, Pilot Air and Astinius. Pilot Air finally uh, getting back to not committing grievous Pilot Errors. He managed to stay alive in his flea. He dink and dunked in and out of the battle. And Astinius tanking like a champion in the Com 2D. Definitely staying alive as long as he can. Solzen definitely did not pick the right target to focus. He had to kill the flea because the commando has limited ammo. And it's begging to be shot at because its armor corks are absolutely insane yeah that commando is it takes so much effort to take it down the that that flea had to be running hot you probably afford to kind of focus on him more i'm i'm still i'm impressed by i think it was axe in that piranha 2 the piranha 2 is the non-machine gun piranha like pulling 700 damage on that short of a fight on that map i'm <laughs> just i'm a little astounded maybe he got a good strike in there or something i don't know you don't really want to be dropping strikes and brawls like that though 
Mm-hmm. But now teams flip the sides. This time DSEG has kind of the more uh, standoff tradey side. So we'll see if they manage to take advantage of that. Uh, they've got those, uh, what is it, Echo 3, F3, F4 hills. And I've seen you know, MS showing why those positions are so strong, even when expecting a brawl on domination. Definitely, DSEG is able to pull out the range game if they wish, but I'm not sure if they're going to go for it. I don't know Diamond Shark's experience with range. I have actually figured that if there was a team that was going to take those range positions, it would be Dropship 4, like I said, because it felt like they definitely have the more skilled range traders on that team, the guys that are very experienced trading with top-tier players. But uh, we could see DSEG maybe pull it out. I'm not sure how coordinated their range game is. It could be a little bit disjointed, or it could be on point. You know, we saw that with Merckstar against CMP. You know, Merckstar, you never thought that their range game would be as advanced as it was in that game, but it was. They almost beat Merckstars. I mean, not Merckstar. Merckstar almost beat Imperial. I don't know, apologies. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, really don't know what to expect from Div C because they just pull different strategies and they just employ different tactics. Yeah, it's a little, uh, I'd say the meta is a little bit less refined, so you kind of being surprised more you know they've got but d it does have some some solid players you know it's hard to tell just from stats but looking at stats you know nerf nerf definitely seems to have the ability to trade well um, so we'll see um i don't i don't know i don't know i'm so surprised every day every day we cast it's i never know what to expect we've seen black lanterns today not a mech i ever expected to see in comp unless like silken was playing it um, even saw yeah silken likes to play the j- silken likes to play the janky mix and just an, just annoy everyone with his lag shield that i remember distinctly Ugh. But and we're ready let's ready. launch yeah remember to change teams but we're good no no i forgot to set the time of day today oh well let's hope it's dan uh-oh my apologies I'm a terrible lobby person. Tolson, not Tolson, Toaster. Exile me to the basement to of the, shame. The Orthanx dungeons. Yes, please. Uh, oh. We'll see. Um, are you sure it's not day? It looks day to me. Well, it was random, so we got lucky again. Oh, we got lucky. Better better be lucky than good, right? Uh, I take good over lucky, but yeah. Both teams flying in. All the right keys to get all the nice things. Go people. What the? Right, what do you see, Mr. Saruman? Gaze into your... Hello? Oh, sorry. Oh, no. I, I <laughs> yeah, thought I was for talking a for a bit, and yeah, I know, right? But um, anyway, um, looking at this, it looks like that uh, they, as in DSEG, are not opting for the range. They are opting for the brawl right now, which is very cool. I'm loving it. Um, they're bringing Shadowhawks with SRM4s and LB10s. I didn't think I would ever see those mechs. Meanwhile, once again, uh, D4 is bringing a bit more range by bringing the DACA. They have um, Maulers with Rotary AC2s and AC5, Shadowhawks. Um, oh, that's a... Uh, um, yeah, uh, once again, Estinia's bringing the Commando, uh, Cyclone Jack bringing SRM. So it seems like that uh, D4 is bringing a combination of DACA and SRMs. Meanwhile, uh, Diamond here. Shark is bringing SRMs and DACA that's more suited to Brawl. Pilot oh, error. Engaging Solzen, but True North's here to kind of put the hurt on Pilot error. It takes a big SRM hit. Sure, Pilot Air really wants to be doing this. She's kind of he or she is all by themselves. But I don't know. It's just kind of the tale of you know the lights for D four kind of harassing D sag D sag grouped up behind these tourmaline or rocks and figuring out I guess what they're gonna do. Uh, yes, right now in pilot air, it just seems to be taking a lot of unnecessary damage. Justinius, however, is coming to back him up. Very good protection over from. Basically, yeah, very good protection from shading. And right now, the UAVs are dropping because uh, DSEC puts them up to try and get a better beat on the lights. Very smart play, but it's a bit too many UAVs. It's like three, four UAVs top. Not smart. 
Yeah, we dropped a few too many there. One, one or two is good enough. One, on, one for your team, maybe one on either side of your line. Um, but yeah, it looks like D4 is just kind of milling about. They've got uh, Soviet Armada in a weird position. But I'm not sure what his build is. Maybe he's just there to kind of protect the Maulers from getting jumps and do a bit of scouting from the high position, position with the jump jets. They need to get and jumped here a little bit by Cake Down and True North Strong, but do they want to come all the way around this corner? They and they're definitely in. not hard committing because those Maulers are laying down some serious DPS right now. Oh my goodness, that was scary. If I was Cake Town, I'd be quaking in my boots right now. Oh my goodness, I hope Thanks. he brought a space diaper in that mech. He's going to need it. Um, Astini is taken down 77%. And I think at that point, you're just happy to get out of there with 10% only lost on that Shadowhawk. But neither team really wants to full engage. Those Maulers, you know, they don't want to get in brawl range. Astinius doing his best to harass in this commando, but Tag is so tight up, it's hard for him. Now Solzin crossing through Caldera again, getting a little bit of scratch. Um, yeah, it's actually interesting. Looking at the strategy, um, Dropship 4 brought the range while uh, DSAG brought the brawl, but DSAG had the favorable range trading side. This is just very interesting play yeah. for both of them. Cyclone Jack eating a couple of SRM shots right going, now. They've kind of stalled. Looks like um, looks like they were about to commit, but now they've hit the edge of this caldera where there's very little cover and they're not moving out. It's just really hot in there. I don't they're know. They're just eating a bunch of rack shots right now. Cake down dropped 80%, and it looks like MK2 is going to follow. Farad also eating up a lot of shots. They're just cresting into that open plain area of the caldera, the most open spot, trying to get a bead on a Stinny's pilot air and violet blue. They're being led into a snare, basically. This is not smart play from DSEG. They're basically going wherever D4 wants them to by using the lights to bait them in disadvantageous, disadvantageous positions, but fly at pilot air. It's a very bad shot. 64%. Oh, and he's legged. That's not good. Pilot error once again making another pilot error. It looks like he's going to drop down unless Solzin can finish him right here, right now. MK2 trying to get the kill on him as well. Pilot error just trying to fight it out. And it looks like the D4 has already abandoned him. Said, sorry, dude, you're a lost cause. And they're going to try and work on the next mech and move on to the next play. MK2 looks to be the next target for Dropship 4. They want to avenge Pilot Air's death, bringing him down to 62%. Astinius making, however, a poor charge, even regretting it in chat, saying, hey, hey, hey. AA, which I guess is ah, I'm in pain. But yeah. even still, that, the that rest of the uh, taking a pretty good beating, just diving in like that, diving in and out for. I don't think there's a real reason to do that. X also 57% in his piranha. They're probably you know one or two good shots away from death, and that's not really what you see at this point. Your Maulers haven't been able to engage too much. Where have they gone? They've rotated into the main body right now. This oh, entire okay. time, they rotated the main body to give it reinforcement. And, uh, yeah. Now a nerf making the charge in his Hunchback 2. See, not the best tank mech. Um, cake down now, rotated out. Nerf did a good job. He rotated out, didn't die for it. Ying and the brawl is just evolving now. And it looks like that uh, Diamond Shark Galaxy is just pushing Dropship Force stuff in. They move the Maulers way too close to the brawl location, grouping them up with the rest of the brawl team. That is not what you want to do, and they paid heavily for it. The Maulers sank with no light support, able to shade or lead them away as they wish. Soviet Armada kills MT2. D4 is trying to scrape it back, but it looks like this match may solidly go into the hands of a Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy unless they lose focus for some reason in the waning areas of this match gets riddle in his huntsman takes a lot of damage cyclone jack going down 27 percent he goes down axe however sinks nerf but still two mech advantage for diamond shark alpha galaxy two north strong sinks ash two mechs left on dropship four to the five on diamond shark alpha galaxy Solzen gets legged in his flea meanwhile Lit blues trying to put some damage down and her assassin not able to get much done yeah. Soviet Armada is just trying to tank what he can in his Nova. Violent Blue manages to kill True North Strong, but the both of them took a lot of damage. It's going to take a miracle for them to pull this out. Solzhen getting, oh, Solzhen getting iced by the Soviet, but it looks just to be a little too late. I don't know, it's 3-2. Maybe if they... Okay, never mind. Ferret takes down Soviet. Violent Blue, last one left. Violent Blue got it, and she was kind of out of the fight, unfortunately. And this match goes to DSAG. 2-1, DSAG leads the race. Yeah, it seemed like maybe D4's lights just taking a little too bad trades trying to harass early on, and that, that ended up costing them a lot. That and the, moving those Maulers up, I'm not sure that was the right decision at all. You know, they kind of got focused early and easily because of that.
What can you tell from the scoreboard? What can I tell from the scoreboard is that uh, Farah did work in his Shadow Hawk. 831 damage. Seems to be oh, wow. the theme. There's always one player that just runs away with the damage far and off. Uh, meanwhile, the other Shadow Hawk on the team, MK2, got focused early. 272 damage. Wasn't able to do much. Opie and his Hunchback 2CC, which I believe was packing a lot of firepower. 472 damage. And then after that, you have the side of Dropship 4. Uh, Soviet Armada leads the way with 518 damage with his Nova. Charlie Lance, Astinius, Yin Yang, Cyclones, Bank King, uh, the range and the lights put together kind of have a very nice tight spread of around 300 to 200 damage, but those maulers getting embroiled in the brawl when they didn't have to is what I feel costed the game to Dropship 4. It forced them to be basically the center of attention instead of forcing them to push out into a wide berth from their range positions, which is what DSAG would have had to do which means that Dropship 4 just could have kept piling down the damage just more and more and more, and it just didn't work out in their favor. Yeah, moving those Maulers seemed like kind of the pivotal point in that. And once DSAG saw that, they seems like they decided to push in, and because D4 was so grouped and they already lost, I think, had they lost two lights by the time they... I think it was just the one, just pilot error by that time. It's kind of all she wrote. It was so easy to focus on those Maulers. Those Maulers, not the tankiest mechs, not the best hitboxes, especially when you're getting stared or jumped by, you know, six medium LBs and SRMs. Definitely. And once you said it right, like their CTs are huge, unnecessarily huge. It's very easy to crit those things out. Um, not a challenge at all, especially for players of a higher caliber. And DSAG is showing that they do have a bit of a higher caliber of play right now. Um, it's just, you know, it's just not making it work. Uh, the synergy seems to be a little bit lost. Uh, things were disjointed, but um, it just uh, didn't didn't work out. Dropship 4 needs to kind of start making a statement if they want to have top of their division. You know, they need to win this match. They've they've got, you know, one drop already. They've only got two more. So it's going to be a 3-2 decision. This isn't exactly what you want if you're aiming for top. But that being said, I want to go over to the map strat. Uh, yeah, sure. You want to kick it off, though? Yeah. Um. So let me wipe this map. The Mauler position were over here. Oh, gosh. Red, red team. Wipe it again. They're over here in Charlie 5, kind of on this line. Um, and the D4 mechs seem were oh, kind of just want to work this work up around this ridge uh, from D4 all the way into D6. Uh, D sag kind of sit in their mechs mostly. D5, D6 is where they. I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. They they work their mechs in here. Uh, <laughs> D4 lights were, they were being a little too ballsy, I think, going all the way up to this inner rim of the caldera on the Diamond Shark side and taking some, I think, pretty bad trades. Eventually, Diamond Sharks looked what I thought was going to be, made what I thought was going to be a disastrous, disastrous push up here into D4, D5. But they kind of stalled. They took a fair bit of fire on that the ridge of that caldera. But then they rotated over here into this area, picked the flea. Um, and in the meantime, the D4 maulers, they moved like all the way up to the edge. So they were, you know, rather than being like almost a full grid square away from the east side guys, they were, you know, maybe half a grid square away with pretty good cover for DSAG to close on them. And so DSAG did. They just ran down those two maulers. Then it kind of devolved into a little messy brawl, but you know the focus was still there pretty well on DSAG's side, and they just kind of managed to clean it up pretty easily, I think, after those Maulers went down. Well, yeah, the Maulers, though, they were DACA, and DACA definitely has the DPS, but they're still hot mechs, which makes it very difficult to use that full DPS to its full potential yeah. on a map like Caustic, especially when you're so close to the center where the heat is hotter. So basically, the Maulers kind of set themselves up for failure um, very on during that match, which is kind of unfortunate since it looked like Dropship 4 was definitely winning the percentage battle if the Maulers stayed back away from the Caldera to trade more. Then it looked like that it could have went their way, but instead the Maulers got embroiled in the brawl where the Shadowhawk's superior DPS would allow them to finish them. Yeah, yeah, and those Shadowhawks are, you know, they're probably not, I would say, the most meta mech at this point, but, you know, there's still nothing to laugh at. The LB10 and SRM4s, I believe you said they had their 
pretty pretty heat efficient or relatively heat efficient for the amount of damage they can put out and you, know, you get four or five or six of those things shooting at you i guess three in this case it'll go down pretty quick um, it's interesting to see them bring that but maybe it's because they're planning on brawling later um, they did ban for rubelite it's a pretty hard map to brawl on but if you want to bring your linebackers on that map later maybe that's kind of the reasoning behind the shadowhawk choice which i I could see that seems like a pretty reasonable decision to make as far as drop tech decisions. The only problem is, is that the Shadow Hawks has terrible hitboxes. Its CT is very easy to shoot. It's a walking box. So it's not necessarily the mech that you'd expect to bring to any comp match, especially when we've seen better alternatives like the Vulcan and mechs such as that. So I'm not exactly sure how strong that pick is. Now, perhaps they uh, are good. And wow, um, just something to bring a little bit of attention to. Ashland Black making a raid of nice. 105 viewers over to our channel, bolstering up to, I believe, believe what i saw was 190 viewers thank you very nice. much ashlyn back we greatly appreciate it thank you very much for supporting the comp scene your love is much appreciated um once again thank you for the viewers and i hope that you had a wonderful stream uh for the new people that are here uh dropship four and dseg are the teams competing in a div c and martial olympiad reborn so not exactly the creme de la creme as you would say of the of basically mwo comp but these teams are still jockeying for position dseg is a chance to if they win this drop be in the running for the number one spot tied with dropship four cameron's highlanders and blackthorn's dragoons each team being two one in the division if dropship four takes this away then they would remain the only undefeated team they're currently 2-0 in div c to stay in division c thus solidifying their position in first place so this match definitely has a lot of weight behind it as far as uh div division c standings stay in martial olympiad reborn dropship four if they win this they will solidly be in first place have a good lead over all the other teams if dsag win this then they'll immediately be jettisoned from fourth fourth place tied to first place with all the other viewers yep. now right. Oh, I'm and sorry. That, go make, on. that makes sense. Uh, Ashlyn Black, uh, thank you for the follow or the raid. Ashlyn is actually in this match. It appears, and she's a she's a streamer on D4 side. We got a lot of streamers in this game. Uh, I know Cyclone Jack, another D4 pilot, is a streamer. Um, Detroit's been streaming a bit. I believe Death's Riddle streams. I'm not. I'm not sure how often. I didn't, I don't catch him too. A lot of streamers this game, so thanks for the And support, now guys. we got another raid. Oh MWO Leagues 2 hitting us with their remaining 30 viewers. I guess they finished up their match. Welcome, everyone and everyone who came from the MWO Leagues 2 channel. Once again, to set the scene, hate to repeat myself for the people that have gotten here, but Dropship 4 and DSAG are apparently playing for first place. DSAG is 1-1 in the division. Dropship 4, the only undefeated team. 2-zip. Dropship 4 is trying to seal the win here, so that way they could stay undefeated. Meanwhile, DSAG is trying to climb up to that tied for first place spot with Cameron Highlanders, Blackthorns, Dragoons, and others. And the fight so far have been pretty tense. Brawls all the way through. Very messy, sloppy Joe level brawls, but brawls nonetheless. And right now, DSAG holds the lead against Dropship 4, 2-1, to one, with the game potentially, with the game down to these matches on Rubelite Oasis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rubelite, uh, it's, you know, the last couple of matches, the games have been brawls. I'd kind of expect... Uh, more brawls but you know this is definitely a hard map to brawl on it's a lot with all the levels kind of making a ring around the edge of the map it's uh gonna be tough but that being said i think dsag probably has something up their sleeves i don't think they've brought a single linebacker when there have been plenty of places where you can bring that really solid tanky brawl mech that's fast it can cap it can kind of it's a jack of all trades in some respects i'd expect to see that mech making a showing for them on rubelite it's been popular i know with some of the div a team Mm-hmm. And um, I think that we might be able to see it too, but I'm also wondering if DSAG or D4 are going to bring ATMs. We've seen them yeah. used very effectively on Rubelite Oasis, and so far high-level teams in EU and NA have tried them as well. Nothing against uh, the lower division teams, but they are the weapons that don't necessarily have the most skill since they're just lock-on weapons. You just look at someone and you fire away. So I would think that this would be the division in which we see them. Yeah, yeah. Well... <laughs> I want to say yes, but I've been wrong every time I've predicted them being brought. I, but we did see, I believe it was uh, 228 making a pretty good win uh, last week against Black Omen. Uh, so maybe we'll see. Putting the skill in no skill lock weapons. Let's see how this goes. And we're dropping. Like both teams readied up pretty timely. Thanks, guys. Um, After this game, I have 
I have one mech bay to give away a mech bay after this game. Yeah, sure. And uh, for you in chat, please whisper me if you can. Let me know. Um, be active in chat and you'll be. I'd whisper you if I won. Uh, yeah, you don't. Can't win. Ha ha. But I can win if you just change the uh, rules and allow me I to win. The like rules. a good person. Mm. Caster bias towards the casters. That's that's a new take. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what do you uh, see that, in these mechs so far, Starmon? It's a molten hot take, and I would appreciate you if you did that, but that's a discussion for another time. Uh, Spank King running six LB5s. Got an LB30 oh, got going on as Annihilator. That's interesting. And we got a hold. Well, while they're holding, we'll just stay off these builds. Pilot Air running the Spider 5D. Wow, I haven't seen that mech in forever. You are medium lasers and large lasers on the Spider 5D. I, I don't know where that's going. Uh, the Dragon 5N, the Proton Classic, three UAC-2s. Uh, Gitka running six SRM-2s on his Javelin. Close range mech, spanking. Once again, bringing the LB-5s. Axe bringing the Ultra AC-5s on his mech, five of which. Ashlyn Brack bringing the Mad Cat Mark II Classic. We've seen a lot of those. And it looks like we got a crash. Went back and reconnected. Announce your time. 5027. Okay, so the teams are agreeing to hold on while those guys get ready. Hopefully, Soviet Armada is not trying to overheat himself. I do not believe that the game is canceling. 5027. And now. Time. They're speaking in code, and I do not. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, DSAG bringing uh, ERPPCs on the Summoner. They're bringing medium lasers and large pulse lasers on the Ebon Jag. Interesting pick. ERPPCs on the Warhawk. Mad Cat Mark II Death Strike has mediums and heavies and Gauss rifles galore. OP bringing the Shadow Cat. So this is a much more interesting deck. We're going to see a clash of PPCs, lasers, and some Gauss versus the DACA damage of Dropship 4. Hopefully they come back and they see this match play out and nobody actually quits because I want to see this unfold. Yeah, this will be an interesting matchup. Uh, like ESAG being the team to opt for more trading mechs uh, where Dropship 4, they've got some kind of mid mid range, kind of more mid range, not like the pure trade map control strategy like I kind of would have expected on their side. Will, will they ever reconnect though? We may have to redrop this one. They're already too. Little yikes. Uh, hopefully they get their your issues sorted out um uh it is two minutes in uh we might they might ask for a redrop but that does come down to the teams we might have a problem here okay so okay. is there any way we can type to them I believe I call so, comcast so we had our mother's advice so uh, looks like that um, Soviet Armada is willing to wait it out, but this is going to be interesting because leaving 10 minutes on the is very dicey. Yeah, it's a little... a lot of time to be losing, especially when... Okay, it looks like we're going to go for a redrop. Um, make sure... make sure one... Make sure one team wins. So the lobby is destroyed. Otherwise, uh, that is a dangerous issue. I know I've accidentally had everyone to a side, and so the match didn't actually end. 15 minutes to unlock all the mechs. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Got a little bit of team players running out of bounds. Oh no, rip OP. Um, but we'll get a redrop going here, folks. Uh, should just be everyone's stuck with the same mechs. Um, hopefully people, you know, not out of the game without looking at the scoreboard too much. Oh no, 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 go grab a cap, please. Grab a cap. No, grab a cap. Okay, wait. Someone grabbed Sigma, so hopefully that's enough time left. Alright. There we go, excellent. There we go. That okay. would have been hilarious. Yeah, yeah, I know that was that's been an issue in the past. Some games I've played where everyone just suicided, and then the match had to just time out on its own. But these these players on top of things. Yeah, they are. So maybe I don't. Know, it looks like the sag had some issues. They might have to get another pilot in here if it was completely unable to reconnect. We'll find out. My turkey sandwich is just staring at me. Oh, your turkey Arm sandwich. Your poor sandwich. 
Popcorn sandwich. It's just like, eat me, eat me. Exactly. I kind of wish a sandwich was coffee now, though. Uh, I, w- I warned you, but I don't know. You, it sounds like you got an early morning in the morning, so we'll try and get this on the roll. Yeah, I have to go to work in like four hours. So much fun. I mean, not four hours. I have to go to work in three hours. What What are you, an Aussie? I wish, crazy you know. New Jerseyan. When I hear Ash and Kraz and live speak, I'm just like, gosh darn it, what'd I do for an Aussie accent? I would get so laid so quickly. Oh my goodness. Like, those guys are so cool. I am so jealous. I, I was wondering where that was going, but I should have known. Um, we'll decent. What can I say? God bless Australia. They might be descendants from criminals, Boy. but you know what? They're still some of the coolest people on the earth. Oh, maybe maybe people in Australia think you're Jersey attractive. Go there. Nobody thinks sauce is attractive, toaster. <laughs> I'm sorry. I I just maybe maybe nobody thinks left there's... is attractive, toaster. Nobody thinks the Long Island accent's attractive, toaster. You okay. think people like hearing us root for the New York Giants pronouncing our O's as O's? Huh? Is that what you want to hear? I'll just cast like this. Dropship 4 versus Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy. <laughs> Actually, no, we're like veering into Boston. Oh Sorry. my Ew, goodness. Yuck. I, c- I couldn't tell. I'm just a, a poor country bumpkin. Man, you're, man here you're, in the land of Tennessee. You're Y'all. a normal person. That's what you are. I'm finding that people live in the country are like the best people actually. Oh, I don't know about that. You yeah. just haven't met enough of us yet. Looks like DSAG has all eight players back. Farron has reconnected finally. Well, I just well the way I race. see it, like Bowser's rural, Bearclaw's not so rural. You're kind of rural. Madge used to be rural, so he's a cool guy. He lives in Atlanta. Logan's somewhat rural. Um, Kippers was rural. Uh, let's see who else is rural. There's a but yeah, there's a lot of good people that are rural. I know. hope he says D Sag's ready. Uh, yep. From before yet. They are all oh, ready. yeah. Also, um, whatchamacallit? Cyclone? No, Cyclone Jack's not rural. He lives in Livingston. Screw oh, that. That's well. like anti rural. Poor, poor Cyclone Jack, nicest guy I know. <laughs> yeah, all I right. know. He's trapped in Livingston. Like, okay. Livingston's actually, right. Livingston's actually Sorry, not bad. Livingston's Sorry, really nice. Are ready. Let's launch. Let's go. Okay, my bad. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, thinking about it, um, yeah, there's a lot of cool people that are rural. I kind of, I, I kind of envy the rural life. It feels like a lot of gamers are really good from the rural areas, too. I think Shroud also that's, is, like, from the more rural parts of Canada, too. So we can't like, go know. out and do things, you know? Exactly. Go like tip you cows, know. I guess. All the people I mentioned are also really good at video games, a long crowd, so you guys are in very good company. So it's like I'm kind of jealous because I'm here in, well, I'm in Tom's River now. I can't complain. Tom's River is super nice. It's like, you know, I live in a house on the ocean. If I complain, I'm spoiled, but you get where I'm going with this. himself on stream. Hi, have you heard, folks? Uh, <laughs> if you're ever in the area, go uh, say hi. I don't care. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, we've got we've got a lot of uh, accents. <laughs> Soviet, Soviet, we know Soviets push the talk Soviet, key now. Yeah, we know his push the talk key definitely. All right, so Stinny is bringing the javelin ten in with missile spider five. So yeah, it's the same setups pretty much. Um, okay, so D4 yeah, bringing the DACA. Um, Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy bringing the combination of lasers and other lots of fun. I can't wait to. See this. this is going to be why is. It- I would oh, say Diamond go. Shark maybe has the more, uh, I would say, a normal drop deck. But that being said, Dragons, I suppose I shouldn't be surprised to see Dragons, Annihilators, Blood Asp. It uh, looks like Blood Asp, right, is, yeah, Ultra ultra Fives. 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 So he's, he's a bit more ranged. Um, looks like Dropship 4 has probably the advantage on DPS, whereas Diamond Shark... Probably have better traders in general. They have kind of higher alpha builds that are going to be lower DPS, but be a little more effective if they're allowed to spend a lot of time peeking and poking from cover. 
Uh, yeah, right now, Theta's cap. That's a big win for Dropship 4. That center point is very hard to get a cap on. So right now, it seems like Diamond Dark Alpha Galaxy already committed the cardinal sin of not even fighting over the most contentious point on the map. And Dropship 4 looks like they're going to be trying to go for the kill shot. They're coming for the mechs on Kappa. This could be very dangerous right now. Ferron and Solzen are caught out. They really don't have a lot of support. MK2 and Nerf are in no position to really help them right now. And this could be a huge win for Dropship 4 if they take advantage of this they're trying to focus down ferrot down 76 percent looks like MK2 his legs are a little opened up and right now mk2 and nerf join the fight get however getting a clean kill excellent pick right there perfect and that's exactly what dropship four needed a light going down the arctic wolves that's what they needed amazingly executed on dropship four side ferrot cursing the heavens why did i even reconnect feels i don't bad, know ferrot feels bad man indeed what a kill great play by dropship four and right now the trades are going back diamond shark alpha galaxy is trying to salvage the game but souls in his javelin 11a is not going to be in any serious capping area right now his right torso is open which is disaster town for his mech because that is an xl javelin Neither team opting to grab Epsi. I think uh, Pilot Error needs to get out of here. Probably just go go grab Epsi. It's a free cap at this point. Pilot Error, yeah, you won idea. your life fight. GTFO, GTFO. You won the life fight. Stop. Take your win. Take your win and go home or go to the point. Don't 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 stay there. Looks like the D4 guys kind of just hanging back now. Uh, Ashen Black and Axe, not really the best ranges for them to be trading them in. Uh, Ying Yang or TKO, whatever you want to call him, he's he's in about the prime range for that Dragon 5N, but he's got a lot of mechs on the tech side looking at him. Even Spank King looks like just kind of going to opt to sit here behind cover. Spank King, did you say what, is he AC2s or AC5s? Uh, I believe he was AC2s, but let me okay. check just in case, because I want to say AC2s. Oh, no, he was LBX5s. I'm LB5. wrong. That's a... So he has the range, but that's a lot of spread going on those long ranges, so who knows? Yeah. Uh, DSEG, uh, their Stormcrow and Solzen and his Javelin kind of moving across. I don't think they're ever going to catch Pilot Air in this spider unless Pilot Air makes another Pilot Air. Um, but yeah, it's kind of weird positioning, I would say. Uh, DSEG looks to be winning these trades. I think D4 needs to try and maybe start getting some of these, trying to get these assaults into a position where they can do more. Ying Yang kind of trading Ying solo. Yang's just yeah. eating shots right now, not doing well. This is not what D4 wants to see. Like you think th these trades are just way too disjointed to make any sense. And Pilot Air is trying to poke with his ZR mediums and his large lasers, getting some chip damage in. But really Dropship 4 just needs to not throw this match. Yeah. Stop trading independently, trade as a team. Need to just slow roll it. They've got got a three cap they almost had a four cap there but now d4 is going to know these guys are on sigma and based on the speed that it's capping they probably have some idea that it's more than one mech but right now dropship four doesn't look like they're going to want to take that advantage and really their mechs aren't in any position to their light lance however could be out to hunt if they recognize that sigma is just basically being run around by the storm crow and souls and in his javelin 11a whose shoulder is one shot from kill but right now it seems like the lights from Dropship 4 are on their own cap duty as well. You have Pilot Air running around in the Spider 5D. And then you also have uh, basically the combination of the rest of Dropship 4 lights scooting around as well. Kick uh, Stinius running around trying to secure the cap game, keep that cap lead nice and high. Yeah, Gick, uh, and there really can't be much of a response from Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy because they lost that one light, which was extremely crucial. Yeah, it looks like they were thinking about uh, trying to jump on True North, but True North knows they're there, and uh, Warhawk's not a fun mech to fight when you're in a light mech, that's for sure. But it looks like, I don't know, D4, TK, TKO is still taking a fair bit of damage. Maybe he's slowed his trades a little bit, but I don't know. esag has got to do something, right? They're, they've been at a 3-2 cap disadvantage for so long. Even sending that Stormcrow around wasn't enough to kind of bring things back in MKT. Fair bit of fire here. Mm -hmm. back. And now the game's just kind of starting to get a little bit of a slow roll. The trades are kind of coming in a little lukewarm, but Dropship 4 is trying to up the ante right now. Uh, 
TKO is tr playing with fire right now, 51%, still trying to lay down the shots. And I think Dropship 4 just needs to realize that they need to not make unnecessary trades, which is kind of what they're doing. You know, uh, I believe that, um, if I'm not, if I'm correct, yeah, um, Dick's arm is ch almost gone. His left torso is cherry red, so this just is not favorable to him. He needs to slow roll the trades, as you said. And the rest of uh, Dropship 4 seems like they're not doing well on their trades either, despite having the light advantage. And it seems like that DSAG recognizes this, and they're going for Theta. Yeah, they're going for Theta. They've moved a lot of their heavier mechs up near, pretty close to this ramp. Uh, doesn't seem like D4 has enough armor on their trading mechs anymore to be able to contest this. That's going to cost them. Yang Yang goes down, and that dragon taking a lot of fire. No. And this is not what Dropship 4 wants to be. They had a beautiful advantage, but it looks like they're starting to throw it away. The trades, the poor trades are just coming back to bite them. And even though Diamond Shark Alpha Galaxy's percentages are starting to drop because they're creeping in the open and the Light Lance led by Astinius is starting to do some more work. The heavies on Dropship 4 are also beat. It's going to come down to this Light Lance trying to sink True North Strong and Cake Town. Both of them taking a lot of damage. Cake Town down 38% after some withering fire. Soviet Armada coming in with the support and it looks like that he might drop soon and he does get gets a perfect shot on him and right now pilot air and his spider 5d trying to lay down some fire as well death's riddle in his summoner being taken down by astinius and gitka summoner Summoner M basically drops down, and these two lights can easily finish these two mechs. The Mad Cat Mark II doesn't really have a lot of weaponry pouring out from it, and the lights finish them off. Soviet Armada killing MK2 as well, and the advantage is definitely in Dropship Force favor now. They manage to protect themselves yeah. against an ill-timed push from DSAG to potentially walk away with the win, but the game is not over yet. Yeah, Ashlyn Black, actually, even though she's alive in her Mad Cat B, she's completely stripped spanking. Doing working as Annihilator, though. I mean, I guess, you know, him just saving all his armor. I know he was at 100% well before, or even by the time I think TKO went down. I just managed to save that mech. I don't think Dzag was really expecting the DPS. And the lights on D4 really capitalizing, manage, managing to kind of fragment that push from Zag. Yes, definitely. And it's a two since DSAG was pulling it back. The percentages were very much in their favor. The trades were going their way. TKO was uh, was basically, you know, kind of trading way too aggressively and taking way too much damage. But at the end of the day, the win goes to the team that you'd expect it to. Dropship 4 at getting that brilliant light game. Yeah. And what do you see from these damage numbers? What I see is what I love to see. Light mechs doing work. Gitka and Astinius, 453, 531 respectively. While they weren't the top damages, they were definitely the MVPs in this match. Five kills between them. Top damage goes to Soviet Armada, but not by much. Astinius with 531. Pilot Air and his Spider 5D, 581 actually is the MVP. I spoke too soon. I am not smart right now. I missed that completely. Meanwhile, the heavies and assaults are just kind of uh, paddling along with some damage with the Light Lance leading in the way very well executed ferrot was the mech that got picked only 51 damage um damage between the heavies and assaults on dsag were between the three to four hundreds with uh, the storm crow and shadowhawk doing uh 314 and 278 respectively from mk2 and op74 so the damage spread was much uh, much cleaner on dsag side with the lights doing most of the heavy lifting on dropships four side rightfully so they got the light pick they cleaned up the brawl in the end they took care of the, uh the weakened mechs astinius bringing that and Div A light play to Div C. That is what I like to see. Playing very well with Gitka right under his wing, bringing yep. the aggression when it's necessary. Beautiful yep. game for Dropship 4. Apart from the losing heavy trades, it was very well executed. Yeah, I, I would have thought that push would have worked out better for DSAG, but you know those lights for D4 getting in there when they did made a big difference, kind of stalled that push, kind of turned too many mechs for DSAG around, and them already being down that Arctic Wolf, you know, they didn't have too much of an answer for it, I guess. Um, you know, maybe they should have said, maybe you should have just sent like one or two heavies over to Theta, kept their longer range trading mechs up high uh, where it's harder to get surrounded like they did. But I don't know. You want to head over to Mapstrat, talk about what happened? Yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right. So I'll let you talk about the very first engagement because I know you love those late fights. I got two words for you. Light pick. Light pick. The light tried to retreat 
up this ramp and did not. Ferrot making a very costly mistake at trying to get over to Kappa, and it did not work out for him. He tried capping it, but the lights just managed to intercept him at Delta 6 and completely stopped him from escaping the bridge. To d credit, they tried to recognize the threat and send the e bon Jag to try and port him, but they were basically mechs that were too slow and didn't have enough range to put down any firepower necessary to save the match. And it basically ended up with an easy, easy kill for Dragon Four's admittedly very good light lance right now, playing very good game. And once that light pick happened, it was kind of all downhill from DSAG from there. They really couldn't afford to cap much of the points. That triangle you drew sounds correct for Dropship Four's positioning. Meanwhile, DSAG were kind of fighting over Gamma and Epsilon. I do wish that the light lance from Dropship 4 was a bit progressive and forcing their advantage, but I can understand also wanting to take the careful, tried, and true route of making sure that the cap game stays on point, which is what Dropship 4 did. As we saw mid-game, they were definitely losing some of the trades, which was not ideal, but at the same time, uh, Dropship 4 just did not balk. They were still admittedly trading, despite the percentages going in favor of DSAG. you got to admire that they were willing to cover the points, but when too much trading is too much trading, you've got to recognize it, and you have to slow your roll, especially when the Light Lance is as much on fire as Dropship 4's Light Lance was. So, at the same time, you know, um, the trading was not ideal, but you definitely felt like they definitely had to put some fire down to try and make sure that the points stayed in their favor. Uh, but overall, you can't really complain about that win from Dropship 4. The light pick was beautifully executed. The lights did their job, and the heavies and the salts made sure that DSAG was focused on Theta, which is what they wanted. They wanted to kind of catch them in that crossfire, take some f- pressure off the lights so that way they could get the flank, which they did. They got si- five kills, amazingly. And um, yeah, they did what they had to do. Dropship 4 coming with a very strong statement win 2-2 even game can't wait to see what happens next but first we have to switch teams yeah it was it was a little interesting i i would have expected you know i, I wanted i wanted to see isag kind of flex a mech over into echo 4 maybe that warhawk sit him up on that kind of really broad wide ledge it's a great place to trade from um and i will say kudos to soviet armada sitting in that annihilator with his lbx's realizing that he's not going to be able to trade efficiently so he just did his best to sit and cover kind of bide his time wait till he was going to be effective you know he he didn't really i don't think he traded at all till dsag managed to push out into echo six and but when he did you know he saw it by the end of the match he'd racked up a serious amount of damage so um i think good patience on his part good game awareness tko slow your rolls man you're the only mech trading um, Ashton Black and the the Mad Cat B, you know, you're not really gonna do too much with those UX and UX fives from that far range against like Laser Vomit and uh, a PPC Warhawk. It's just not gonna be winning trades. Uh, no, he's not, and it was kind of evident that do- the Docket deck against D4 wasn't really getting the job done trade-wise, but it didn't matter because they were able to stop the push. I don't know why DSAG felt they had the need to move up. I guess they saw the trades winning in their favor, and they kind of went all Apex Legends on us, smelling blood in the water, pushing. Now, Apex Legends pushing is a very viable st- strat, and in other games like Fortnite, if their shields are down, very viable strat, but not in Mech Warrior Online. You do not necessarily win the game pushing, just just because the percentages are in your favorite. So it's just, you know, it's um it's tricky. You have to know when to go in and when not to go in. Yeah, I, th- I thought it was maybe a good time to push um at the time, and I didn't really kind of catch on that they were going to lose that. I thought they're in a perfect position to start, but I guess, you know, I, I underestimated at least, you know, the value that that Annihilator was going to bring and the ability of the D4 lights, how they were going to kind of go uncontested down here in like Echo 6, Echo 7, just harassing that that those poor assault mechs on DSAG's side. And you know what? This was a much needed win for Dropship for his Light Lance because they kind of, you know, obviously this is a team game, right? You don't want to put the blame on anyone's shoulders. You know, drop one. If Dropship 4 aims better, if they focus targets better, then obviously the game could have been put it to bed for dropship four it's never one pilot's fault never but you know pilot air definitely made some big mistakes astinius uh, and his commando while pulling out some big games also had a bit of a struggle bus and drop three um they needed this and this shows that you know when they are on point 
54 light lance is extremely dangerous. Probably one of the best light lances in DMC. There is some very high end talent on this light lance that is not talked about. Their experience in this area is unmatched. I feel compared to DSEG. Yeah, it's it's been a night so a night of I think highs and lows. Whereas I think DSEG's been overall the more consistent team. Um, they've. They've, they haven't like I think made any like two huge egregious errors. Maybe the push on this last last game was um, a bit of an error, but I wouldn't say it was you know a major one. I think they were in a good position that they could have won that. Maybe they just needed to land their shots a bit better. Maybe they should have waited a bit and cooled down. I'm I'm not really sure. I wasn't in in their comms. I didn't see what they saw. And go and going back to it. Um, I just want to remind you, Toaster. Yes. What is the score between these two teams? Uh, it is it is two two, and so I, right we were you said at the start of the stream, you know, dropship four they're they're wanting to fight for the top of their top of their division, but they're definitely being put to the test by this DSAG team, who I don't think we expected to do as well based on you know kind of the history of matches in this division. But you know, maybe DSAG just kind of hunkered down, uh, buckled up, and did some extra practices this past week or two, and. I mean, this is the game right here. This is yep. what we all want to see. Love 2-2 two -two matches. Dropship 4 better bring the heat. Get cover, taking the wind out of everyone's sails. Not unready. Come on, man. Let's oh. go. There we go. We're going right. to launch. And, Let's and do and this, Remind baby. me after this game. I, I forgot. I have, I have one mech bait again. So can't, can't no! deny Twitch chat. Which no! I'll remember next time. The giveaways! Giveaway. The free stuff! Toaster, why don't you remind me? No! Darn! I will get it. I will get I will get someone, not you, Mech Bay, after this drop. <laughs> get get Saruman a Mech Bay. Saruman uh, will kindly donate that Mech Bay to charity if you get Saruman. Donate the Mech Bay to charity. You delete Saruman 501 scores. Some poor orphans or. Uryx, orphan Uryx, who uh, need a mech bay, I guess. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> right, orphan Uryx, who it's... need a mech bay. What, what mechs do you see on the field for these teams? What are people bringing? Uh, Pilot Air, MVP of last game, is bringing a Locust oh, Pirate's right. Bane with do four small lasers and heavy machine guns. Oh my, oh my goodness. goodness. We have a hold. We have a hold. All right. Well, while they're holding, we're going to run through these builds. Lightning round. Four ER PPCs from True North Strong on his Warhawk C. Nerf bringing ER medium lasers and large pulse lasers. In his Ebon Jag. Oh, they're good at 1430. Okay. Thank goodness. MK2 bringing Streak Sixes in his Stormcrow. Getting ready for the Light Killer. That might be the same Stormcrow he ran last time, though, which could be explained why Dropship 4 didn't go so ham on them. ER PPCs bringing by the Summoner, Mad Cat Mark II, uh, Ultra AC5s, AC10 from Cake Town. Two North Strong, as I said, PPC. Streak 6 is on the Arctic Wolves from Solzen, so they're definitely going more for light protection. They saw the danger of those lights, and they wanted to make sure that they couldn't do much. Meanwhile, Dropship 4, Pilot Air, uh, once again, Pirate Spain. What's happening? It's happening. We, we have Lerms in a match. Uh, Axe, I, I, looked, I just glanced at his Supernova A. It says Lerms, so I expect lots of mistakes. It's not Lerms. Is it's it not better. Lerms? It's ATMs. Oh, it's ATMs. <laughs> Your decals lie, sir. ATM 12s. Yes, Ferret. well, oh, no, X Ferret does. might get jumped here on Theta. He's engaging three D4 light mechs all by his lonesome. He needs to get out of there and quick. Run, little spider, run. Oh, my run. goodness. Farrah is in but, serious trouble. But that, but that storm crow's there with the streaks. Astinius is going to eat it. He needs to get out right now. Oh, my goodness. Those streaks are definitely hurting. That's a lot of streak sixes in. Astinius might be always oh, just got out. He just Arctic got Wolf out. Too is streaks as well. Oh, he my goes goodness. Down. But he doesn't know. Astinius gets sunk by the streaks. Oh, that was terrible. Oh, oh no. boy. That is not ideal. And right now, the advantage shifts away from Dropship 4 all the way back to Diamond Shark. Astinius eats missiles for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh, my goodness. I know how it feels to get streaked. That is not a good feeling. Astinius yeah. hanging his head right now. I feel you, buddy. And right now, the yeah, MK2, MK2 is just going. Crow. Yeah, he's chasing off Gitka. Oh, Those no. streaks do have oh, a no, lot of range. Thing. Yes, and Pilot Air is now going to potentially be... Oh. Yeah, that was that was quick. <laughs> I, I look away, look away, Chad. Uh, that was dirty, and right now D4 out of sheer necessity is trying to, to push to the too. top. 
Like, Ica needs yeah. to get out of here before that storm street killer sh shows up. They cannot afford to lose their last lane mech, especially on this map. This is a very hard map to control cap-wise. Looks like uh, the rest of the D4 mechs, though, have kind of moved up, taken this high position. Isag kind of spreading their lines out a little better. Oh, MK2, I missed it. I'm sorry, chat. Takes out Gika. So D4 has lost all their light mechs. This is dire straits. This is terrible. I do not think D4 could pull this back. They're at a three mech disadvantage. Their light lance was the MVP last game. And these Daka mechs didn't necessarily trade that well the game before. I think DSAG has this comfortably in the bag. I don't want to call it quickly. D4 might still be able to pull out a win. I almost kind of hope they do since that would be the major upset. But it's looking like DSAG just has this lock. Uh, D4 definitely feels the pressure. They're moving their lines all the way up and out in the open on Theta here. <laughs> I'm not sure that's TKO quite the pushing like a man's man, unfortunately, eating shots for it. Nerf brings him down without much thought. Axe in the supernova trying to rain down ATMs, but he can't get a sizable lock. It looks like he's looking at the wrong side right now. He's way too low. Those ATMs aren't really going to make much connection, even if they do hit. And the percentages are just not favoring dropship for admirable stand. Look at the ATMs. ATMs though, Cake Town gets wrecked by a huge salvo of ATMs. Axe admirably trying to bring him down. Look at the damage from 90% to 26. Nerf takes down Ashland Black though, Spanking trying to put down some stock to stop souls and Axe kills Nerf with that huge salvo, but it's all for naught. Three mechs left. Axe is pretty much solidly dead. Spanking and his half near is soon going to follow since that mech is a walking CT. Very easy to kill. And the Arctic Wolf from Solzin is completely on him. Soviet Armada trying to shade. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen. This match is definitely going to DSEG. It looked so good. They almost had that spider pick. But then the streak mechs for DSEG showed up at the perfect time and just brought it to D4. Those, those locusts, man, they needed to see those mechs and just run and run as far away, fast away as they can. Gitka, I know you want to get that cap, but... Well, it was just a perfect storm because, you know, D4 brought the streaks. I mean, D4 brought the locusts, two locusts as a matter of fact, and a gender yeah. D. Both those mechs are extremely vulnerable to streaks. So it was just like, you know, it was the perfect storm of events. DSAG brought exactly what they needed to for... D4's light mix, which admittedly did work last round, and looking at the damage, a Stadius 18, Pilot Air 41, Gitka 61. Womp womp. Streets will do that to you. Very sorry rip, to see that uh, as a light pants. pilot. It hurts my heart. Really does. Meanwhile, Stormcrow and Ebon Jags, the Stormcrow did work that round. True North Strong also doing work. 493, but 642 from MK2. Four kills, three of them definitely coming from the lights. So the effectiveness of that Stormcrow cannot be denied. Very solid round, though. Two, three, fun games. But this goes to DSAG. And now with this win, DSAG has, no is undefeated. In, yeah, DSAG stops Dropship 4's... Uh, Undefeated streak, and now Dropship 4, DSEG, Cameron's Highlanders, and Blackthorn's Dragoons are all in the race for that first place slot. But first, before we forget, oh, giveaway. Let's, let's, let's do the giveaway. I will remember. Ah, giveaway tool, come here. Add viewers. WO Leagues. Aha. Let's go. Check out Bear Claw. Goodbye, Bear Claw. Goodbye, Dabachi. Uh, wait, 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 wait. No, no. Bye, Ash. Um, let's see. Oh, goodbye, Kraz. Goodbye, Kurlon. I, I, you leave, Sar leave Saruman in, please. Uh, Saruman. Just, just oh, do I'll it. scroll past Saruman. Goodbye, Belmont. Yeah, goodbye, there you Toaster. go. Oh, wait, we got to go back up. Goodbye, Saruman. All right. <laughs> no, why? <laughs> Debated, okay, sir. Bye. All right. Um, D4, I know, has another match coming up. So I don't believe we're going to get any other guys, but we'll see if maybe one of the DSAG guys wants to come in. Hey, um, interviews are not mandatory. They're not mandatory, but you know, always, mm. always good to hear, you know, kind of what's gone through your thoughts. It's, it's, I think one of the most interesting things, you know, can't quite want to peer into the mind of what was going on in their comms. RQS Divine, another streamer, everybody. Uh, congratulations, RQS. Uh, please whisper me. I will give you a McBay code and... Please, uh, yeah, please, please whisper me. I don't want to hold on to these. I, I do not get to keep them. But yeah, 
talk about that last match and oh those poor light mechs oh those poor light mechs head over are you there are you there? i am 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 all right so it was it was a pretty simple match right uh the spider runs all the way to theta meets the light mechs of d4 at theta Almost, I don't know, he didn't take that much damage, so good on him for that, but he maybe stayed a little bit longer, but maybe his goal was just to be bait. Eventually, the Stormcrow made it, and then the Arctic Wolf made it, and then rip all the D4 light mechs. Astinius, we almost thought, made it out, but he didn't quite. Uh, nope. They caught his Jenner from the back, and then the Stormcrow and the Arctic Wolf competed, completed their light massacre, running all the way down to F5 to kill first, I don't remember who was Pirates main, but their life ended so quickly. And then they eventually found Gitka at Epsilon, who Gitka had made it out of Theta, tried to get another cap, knew he was going to have to be, you know, spending a lot of time capping that job, but maybe stuck around a little bit too long. Gets caught. And at that point, you you know, you're down three mechs. What are you going to do? Pretty much. Uh, yeah, that pretty much solves it, and it looks like uh, uh, no interviewer from either team. Okay, no interviewers. Well, that is okay. But, mm -hmm. I don't know. Any last thoughts for this match? Last thing you want to say? Streaks hurt. Yes, yeah, streaks hurt. Bane of every light mech. Uh, I... I hate playing light mechs for that reason. <laughs> ATMs. Um, yeah, well, you know what? Light mechs don't like you. Yes, I know. I can't look down <laughs> in any of my heavies anyways. Poor summoner. Get up to my legs. Poor summoner. I, I can't see much of each in. No, um, you could boost up and just shoot. I don't know how that goes. Like, know. boost up behind and try and get a decent shot on the light mech in question. <laughs> okay. Um... Well, I think that's it for us, folks. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, it, was, it was a blast. Uh, great matches tonight between DSAG D4. DSAG pulling the upset over D4, who was, you know, poised to take the lead in this division. Uh, Dipsy, you know, it looks like it's going to be a pretty tough fight between Dropship 4, uh, Cameron's Highlanders, BTD. And, you know, maybe if DSAG kind of runs the table here, maybe they can bring it back themselves. They certainly showed tonight that they can beat any team in this division. Um, oh, run the table. Yeah, run oh. the table. Uh, Bandit's favorite favorite term. Um, mm hmm Is our, our... Okay. But yeah, I think that's it for us, folks. Uh, thanks for watching. Tune in. I don't know if any of the other streams are still going uh, for MWO Leagues 2 or MWO Leagues 3. Oh, but, wait, hold on. We do wait. have Cyclone in Dropship 2. Oh, it looks like he we... might be here for the oh, interview. Okay. So let's bring him down. Okay. Hey, Greetings, Cyclone. Cyclone. Are you here for the interview? I am, in fact, sir. Oh, no, that no is worries, okay. So. so, Toast, kick off the questions. Um, I, I don't, I don't know what to, what to ask. Uh, drop one. Um, did you guys? It seemed like your ultraviolet got maybe a little bit caught out. Uh, did you guys? Had you guys scouted those annihilators coming down? Kind of what was the reaction when you did eventually confirm that they were coming down that way? So it was funny because uh, uh, Spank King had the Overwatch and he was telling us they were coming and he started opening opening with volleys of fire and it was hitting the geometry that wasn't there. Oh, yes. Those, those, uh, tourmaline, uh, those tourmalines on tourmaline, they'll get get you for sure if you yeah. don't know all the, all the little geometry ticks. It's yeah. a hard place to fight from. Mm -hmm. What was what was kind of going... It was, was What were comms like at the end of that game when uh, TKO... You know, it was TKO versus Solzen in the Black Lantern. What was TKO thinking? Was he saying anything? Was it jam packed with, oh, he's over there? Over here. Look, look back. You just missed him. No. Um, our comms are actually really kind of crisp and clean when we're in drop. Um, between, I, I mean, it's it's just all sorts of silliness and, and you know, making fun and joking and, and playing around with each other and poking fun at one another. But when we're in drops, everything's kind of crisp overlapping you can hear each other what everybody's doing and we know what's going on in the field without even looking um i guess rewinding a little bit i, I should have asked first system belmont it looked like he got a pretty wicked flank on with his daca 
Firewolf on the backs of those D tag mechs? Did he just like oh, scream, yeah. "I'm going in," and like call for the push of your uh, linebackers, or what was what was going on at that point? It seemed like it devolved into kind of a messy brawl. He called that he got the flank, and he started ripping open shots, and that's when you know the high sign happened, and everybody started moving in. Cool. Well, it was it was it was well fought. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think pilot error made a bit of a pilot error, but you know, for branding's sake, that's perfect, right? Um, he beat him up up he beat himself up so bad for that i feel so bad for that kid um he, he doesn't he doesn't make errors like that on the normal so to see him do it twice yeah. three times tonight we just we kind of felt bad for him that's it's always rough i know i've made some stupid mistakes i know my first game i think with e5 uh i managed and to now overheat. toaster i don't mean to interrupt you but we are also joined by op 74 leader of dsag how's it going pretty good all right, so Toaster, sorry to interrupt. Continue your questioning. All right, so we've been talking about uh, the drop one so far, OP, kind of going through kind of what was in the D4's pilot's minds. But so you guys pushed pretty immediately straight across in your annihilators, right? What was going yeah. through your minds, uh, you know, maybe after it seemed like you guys kind of stalled on that corner, you decided not to go around. What, what was your kind of reasoning well, behind that? The initial idea was to get up into the castle as fast as possible. But we kind of changed the idea a little bit because we had so many people out, specifically the, the one dire wolf. Um, so that's, <clears throat> but it led to some kills. It led to some fire. Uh, unfortunately, it also let our, um, our heavies immediately, our heavies up in, what is it? The eight area. Uh, they got kind of cut off and dead, but, um, that and DR committed a sin of XL or hammer, which we will <laughs> talk about. But um, the fact of the matter is that it was controlling that center. So, and controlling the center and then controlling the cap game, that was kind of threw it a little there. But the fact is we still ended up um, most with, with the high cap. So that was that it kind of fell in line with what we were doing. So, yeah, it was all right. Oh, okay, sorry. Just go on. Go ahead. Um, oh, okay. To, to Cyclone, this is for you. How come Dropship 4 opted to go with a bit more of a rangy strat on Drop 3 instead of Drop 2, where you guys had the superior trading side for that man? Um, it's kind of different. We're going a little different. We've, we've, for the most part, we've been known for our brawl, right? That's something that we've, we've seen. You know, it's something that we learned training with a lot of Isengrim guys training with some of the D4 guys. It's what we're good at. It's, it's something that we're kind of deviating from and trying to get a little more into the trade. Um, is it the best idea all the time? Well, I'm pretty sure you guys saw it tonight, not so much. But we're trying something new. We want to diversify and add another weapon to the arsenal. Okay, just kind of learning something new, learning, learning the hard yeah. way sometimes, I guess, you know? Yeah, exactly. But it was a curveball, I will admit. That was, that, it's like, that's a, those are maulers. Cool. <laughs> How are we going to deal with that? What was, so Opie, what was kind of, what were you guys thinking? You know, it seemed like the D4 lights were being really aggressive. What kind of motivated your push into the caldera and then kind of around where you eventually jumped that flea? See, well, uh, a lot of that, unfortunately, just kind of ended up with, um, it, like pushing through the caldera was not exactly the idea. Or it was kind of we wanted to skirt around the back end of the cult. As it ended out, we caught that flea out. Solzin caught it out. I took a shot at it. Um, and so it's we had one of them corn. We had one cornered, so we took it out and then just work one, just work them one at a time from there. So, okay. Um, sorry, man, you have any more questions about that drop? I think that drop was. I think that drop's good. Now I want to walk into uh, drop the four. Um, basically, drops four and five was the game of who could get the better light ganks. Oh. Um, Cyclone, was that light gank in drop four? Play um, the drop four was. It, it was one of those do or dies. We had our we had uh, we had our juices flowing. We were getting ready to go. It was it was do or die, and um, we we knew we had to throw out our A game, and we we kind of went a little more old school with a little uh, new school flavor and just kind of threw it all in. Yeah. Um, I was about to say that as soon as we lost ferret, that was the, that was the big, the turning point for us is we kind of ran out of ideas on how to get caps and how to cover over 
And so we ended up having to push over and make something happen. And you got they, they the guys reacted to it really, really well. Hit us hard. <laughs> so So uh, okay, so and then then drop five. Um you guys kinda let them have it with the streak mix. Was that a, is that a plan choice or was that something, you know, after kind of getting worked that, over maybe by the lights the previous round, did you just kind of wing it? And they, they have a lot of excellent. This is one of the things we've known about D4 for a while is they have a lot of excellent light and medium, fast medium. So it's kind of one of those tricks we kind of held in the bag. But seeing since we've been seeing nothing but three lights pretty much all night or light, you know, light medium, um, haul, hauling out the streaks for that was the right choice on drop five so did the was the spider i think he he hung around a little bit after even after he saw the three d4 lights was he kind of hanging out there as specifically as bait or was it just yep. kind of got it got to shake a leg every once in a while okay cyclone uh i don't know that that last match has looked a little rough for you guys did you just, just kind of push out onto theta after your lights were dead because you knew you had to get aggressive or what was the reasoning behind it was uh at that point we knew it was either go big or go the hell home and uh we weren't about ready to roll over so it was you know it was time to go oh, we okay. just went um it's a ballsy move fortunately didn't pay off but uh you know overall still great matches tonight uh yeah congratulations d sag on your 3-2 victory um hope Thank to you. maybe we'll cast some more of your matches the end of the as the season goes on getting pretty yeah, yeah. close to ending though yeah it's it's coming up quick Sarman, you have any uh, final questions, thoughts, words? Nope. Good match. Wish you guys the best. And it's going to be interesting watching NA Div C since you are all tied for first place. Yep. It's going to be a fight, fellas. We will see. We quite literally just started our next game of the night. Also, the Cyclone. Um, also, Cyclone, uh, we will allow this because we love you. Uh, would you like to say something to the viewers about your stream? Um, just a big thank you to everybody who's come through and, and supported the stream. Uh, very much appreciated. Um, I, I've, I've grown in 10 months to be what I think a, a little piece of the community. And I, I'm just thankful for all the love and the reception. And I would like to repeat that everybody check out Cyclo Jab's Twitch stream. Uh, I, what is the handle Cyclone? Could you plug it in there for me? You definitely can. Also, if you want to link your Discord, that's fine too. Cyclone Jack is a very, very good person. I would 100% recommend you, everybody here check him out. Along with many of the manifold of streamers Drop the Ship for uh, um, utilizes. But other than that, I believe I'm finished. All right. Uh, Jack, I just wanted to say, hell of a fight tonight, man. Hell yeah, man. Thank you very much for the that, awesome match, dude. That, that, that was bitching. Uh, most definitely. Yeah, good to see both of you guys kind of making a great show of things. Um, but I think that's going to be it for us. Uh, thanks thanks for coming for the interview, Opie and Cyclone Jack. I always appreciate it. Good to talk to you guys, kind of hear what's going through your you and your pilots' minds as the matches play out. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for the raids, uh, Cyclone. Tell, us, tell Ashlyn thanks from us, too. Really appreciate it. MW League's always happy to get a raid or two. Um, but, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Have a good one. Most definitely take it easy, gentlemen.